When you think about coffee, you think about this one. This is Arabica coffee, and anytime you go to the store, no matter what kind of roast you're getting, no matter what kind of region that you're getting, if it's Ethiopian coffee or uh, Colombian coffee, doesn't matter. It's probably Arabica coffee. There are also these two. This is Robusta coffee, probably saying it wrong. Robusta coffee is the second most common coffee type, and that is because it is used in Vietnamese coffee. So uh, coffee in Vietnam, probably this one. It is also sometimes mixed into coffee blends because it has more caffeine in it. It also has more antioxidants in it. It also creates more of a foaminess to it and it's uh, popular in Italian espresso. So this one is used, but uh, not nearly as common as Arabica. Liberica, now we're getting kind of weird, okay? Because this one is least common. It actually says on the uh, label here that it's endangered, which um, it's not, not endangered, but it is still very rare. This is most commonly used in uh, certain parts of Southeast Asia. You'll see it in Malaysia sometimes. You'll see it in Indonesia. That's probably where it's most popular. And you'll see it in the Philippines. This one comes from the Philippines. The reason why this is seen in that part of the world is that in Indonesia used to be a lot of Arabica plantations, but it was hit by a disease known as coffee rust. And because of that, they had to grow a different species. Now I believe they can grow both, but this one still has a, a foot in the country. People are used to the uh, Liberica coffee. I've had this once before, and that was at a cafe in Malaysia that sold uh, the Kopi Luwak, which is the, the coffee that animals eat and then poop out. Actually, I believe they called it uh, Kopi Moseng at the place I was at because they use Liberica beans instead of Arabica beans, which are usually what are used. And usually this is uh, an inhumane practice, so I don't recommend that you drink Kopi Luwak or Ko Kopi Masang. The place I went to, they said that they collect it wild. It was a very, very expensive cup of coffee. I believe it cost $70 for like a little teacup of it. And it tasted awful. It tasted like bile. It's a bit nutty. No, not really. It's actually really... Um... Sour. I'm not sure if that was because of the coffee beans that were used or if it was because the beans passed through the digestive tract of a small animal. Probably the second one. First, let's get a thumbnail. And second, I'm going to uh, grind these up. Here's regular coffee in the French press. Smells like coffee. The Liberica. That's different. Um, there's something extra to that, to that that's um, maybe a little bit medicinal. And the Robusta. Ooh, very roasty, very earthy. It smells like the woods. Now I'm doing everything I can to kind of keep things as even as I can. So I'm using the same amount of coffee grounds in each one. However, I have a French press and two pour overs. So, might be a slight difference there. Also, not sure what the roasts are. I believe these are all medium roasts, but I don't know for sure, so there might be a difference there. But I'm hoping that despite of those things, it will still give me an idea if there is a difference between the different species. First, I have just regular plain Arabica coffee. So we have kind of like a control group, I guess, but you know, all coffee is different. A lot of different roasts and uh, regions, a lot of variation in coffee. So let's see what this one's like. I gotta, I gotta do it like a professional, right? It's got a hint of uh, concrete and a touch of uh, wine berry in it. Really, it just tastes like your standard cup of coffee. Um, it's maybe a little bit more bright, but it has like a nice roastiness to it, a slight fruitiness to it. That's good. Next, I'll do the Robusta coffee, just because this is something that is a little bit more common, a little bit easier to find. Hmm. 
It tastes like if you were to combine coffee with pu'er tea. It's like a very like earthy kind of tea, but it also has a little bit of like a woody flavor to it as well. Not woody like bad, but woody like good. And finally, the Liberica coffee. Ooh, yeah, there, it definitely has like a medicine flavor or smell to it. Let's, uh, let's try it. Even though I use the same amount of water and uh, the same amount of coffee, this one ended up coming out a little bit lighter. So it could be a lighter roast. It could be because of the species. The Liberica is... It's got a lot going on in it. It's a little bit rough. It is a little bit brighter than the Robusta. Robusta? I'm saying it wrong every single time. Uh, not as bright as the Arabica. It is a little bit earthy, but it is not woody the way that the Robusta is. It uh, has a slight herbal taste to it and maybe a slight smokiness to it, like a little ashy. Um, not bad though. They all taste good, but they're all very different. It's hard for me to pick a favorite between these three because I don't drink black coffee. So I'm going to add milk and sugar to these and then compare it again and then pick uh, a favorite. Feels very weird doing this without uh, my friend Stu and Alba with me, but they were part of the Not Coffee series, Not the Coffee series. But if you haven't seen the Not Coffee series, I would recommend checking it out. I'll put a link to the description below of a playlist. But if you like seeing me drink roasty beverages that is the place to go sometimes with the not coffee series i would make something that did not look like coffee it looked like tea or something uh, these are all definitely coffee looking even though they are different species okay so first regular coffee mm. yeah when you add milk and sugar to it it brings out more of that brightness to it I can even kind of detect some of the fruit flavors in there. I'm getting a little bit of um, dried apricot and um, honey. Robusta coffee. This is not a matter of roasts. This is definitely a different flavor because of the beans. This tastes less woody, less earthy, although it does still have those qualities, but the milk and sugar are bringing out a flavor of rum, like raisins that were soaked in rum. It's got a sweet fruit flavor, but also like that, that kind of liqueur kind of flavor. It also tastes like it's gonna make my heart explode because I can, I can feel that caffeine in there. And finally, the Liberica. When you add the milk and sugar to this, the, the kind of like medicinal taste that it had when it was black is kind of gone. This has more of like a caramel flavor to it and maybe a little chocolatey and still ashy. I think that ash flavor, uh, that might be because of the roast. I'm not entirely sure, but that definitely comes out. It tastes kind of like s'mores in a way. But what is my favorite? I think I would put the Robusta in last place. I like it, but I think it's definitely something to be blended. That rum raisin taste that this has is a bit much. Um, I like it, but I think it, on its own, it, 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 needs, it needs friends. It needs some more extra flavors in there. Liberica. I would totally drink a cup of that, but um, it's a little little lacking compared to a nice cup of Arabica coffee. That could be partly because this has had so much work done. You know, this has been cultivated so much that there are so many different variations. Like if you were to compare like a cup of gas station coffee, this is your standard gas station coffee to my uh, Robusta and Liberica, these win by far. Uh, definitely better than a cheap cup of coffee, but uh, since I have like a pretty decent one that I got from uh, like a fancy coffee place, 
it wins. I think it just had more work done to it. Because I have to, I'm going to mix these all together. Oh yeah. So three species of coffee in one glass. What will that be like? It's good, but it feels like those flavors are fighting each other a little bit. Maybe doing this randomly like I did, just like pouring the leftovers into one cup. Maybe not the best idea. They each have their different qualities that I can see wanting to use for different reasons. And I think blending them in some ways would lead to some really interesting and tasty results. But what boggles my mind is that although we are so obsessed with coffee, there are so many different varieties, there are so many different roasts and grinds, and yet so much of it is just Arabica coffee. Why aren't we using the other species? And this is only three. There's like a whole bunch more that you just can't find. There's like wild coffees and stuff like that. Why aren't we using those? There is so much potential when you start going into other coffee species. Like if you were to do to Liberica what has been done to Arabica and have different regions and roasts and like all of that and really kind of like focus on it, you can create something that would be like a whole new thing for coffee. A whole new thing for people to get obsessed about. I mean, maybe there's some reason for it that I'm not aware of, but it seems like there is a lot that can be done here. So, uh, yeah, make it happen, guys. Go, go make a change. Go find some Liberica coffee, buy it. Find some Robusta coffee, buy it. And play around. See if you come up with like a blend that you like. See if you can create a demand for this sort of thing. And then maybe we're going to get some like really, really crazy species of wild coffee showing up on supermarket shelves. That would be really cool. But um, yeah, until then, uh, very interesting to try this. And um, yeah, this is going to keep me up tonight. I want to give a special shout out to AltPod and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how this channel happens, is how I can afford to do all the things that I do. So if you want to help me out by supporting the channel and getting some bonuses along the way, check out the description. I also have these shirts for sale. Those are in the description as well. See you next time. Bye.